Hi everyone, I hope you've all had a lovely half term break and managed to have some time away from your screens. My name is Miss Weston, I'm going to be doing this week's assembly and we are going to talk about what it means to be a hero. So this got me thinking about what we mean when we say the word hero, because it's a word we hear quite regularly nowadays, especially since the start of the pandemic. So I googled it to find out what the true definition is. And Google states that a hero is a person who is admired for their courage, outstanding achievements or noble qualities. And I just wanted to think about that for a moment. Looking at the definition made me think that a hero can mean different things to different people. So out of curiosity, I asked my three-year-old who his heroes would be. And you can see some of his answers on the screen there. Um, you know, we've got Virgil Tracy from Thunderbirds, Chase from Paw Patrol, Thomas the Tank Engine, Fireman Sam, and Super Tato. I think one thing in particular that the past year has highlighted for me is the fact that our communities do come together to help each other in times of crisis. If you look on the screen here, we have what we would consider to be our national heroes. So you've got the fire brigade, you've got the NHS staff, you've got care home workers, supermarket staff, you've got the police service. All of these people have kept going day in, day out to, to help people um, throughout the past year and since the start of the pandemic. But what we haven't considered is the local heroes and people in the community who've gone above and beyond what is expected of them as well. So... You know, we have local takeaways and local cafes providing free meals to people who need them. We've got um, people like the British Airways pilot who became a Tesco delivery driver to make sure that people could get their food when they were isolating and when they couldn't get out and about to the shops. We've got friends, we've got families, we've got neighbours, people you don't even know really rising to the occasion to show that they care about others and that they want help. And this really made me think because... There are clear links between a stereotypical hero and what my three-year-old said. So, you know, you've got the fire brigade there. He said Fireman Sam. You've got the police service. He said Chase from Paw Patrol. Um, we've got the Thunderbirds in there. They always go out of their way to, to rescue people. That's what they're there for. Um, but I really wanted to, to think who our personal heroes are, um, people who we look up to and the reasons why we look up to them. So I spoke to a few members of staff in school, and this is what they had to say. So when I asked Mr. Byers who his hero was, he said Bobby Robson. And you can see a picture of uh, Bobby Robson on the screen there now. And what Mr. Byers had to say was, he grew up locally in our catchment area. He was born in Sacriston and grew up in Langley Park. He was an excellent footballer and played for England, but it was as a manager that he was best known. He took Ipswich Town FA Cup and European success. He managed England at two World Cups and went on to manage some of the biggest clubs in the world. And he's listed the clubs there as well before managing his boyhood team, Newcastle United. However, those aren't actually the reasons that Bobby Robson was Mr. Byers' hero. So he is my hero because of his values. He never forgot where he came from and how lucky he was to work in football. His father was a miner. He treated everyone with respect and ensured that his teams played fairly. He knew how to lose as well as win, even when others were not as sporting. He was actually the manager of England in 1986 when they lost to Maradona's Hand of God goal. And despite being treated for cancer on numerous occasions, he raised millions of pounds for cancer-related charities in this region. So a very, very inspirational person there. Mrs. Rayson gave Michelle Obama as her hero. And what she said was, I've recently read Michelle Obama's biography. She is my hero. The reasons why are her determination to make the world a better place. With absolute grace and humility, she manages to juggle family life with many projects for the youth of today and impoverished society. She is intelligent, witty, warm, and for me is the epitome of kindness. So very inspirational lady there, Michelle Obama. Dr. Smith is also a Michelle Obama fan. She is a symbol of compassion, honesty, and integrity in a chaotic world. A leader who demonstrates that women can aspire to great things and whose support of charities demonstrates how we can make a positive change in our world. Mrs King chose Maya Angelou as her personal hero, and what she had to say was, she faced unbelievable adversity throughout her life from a very young age, and never let any of it beat her. Instead, she used those experiences and turned them into tenacity and wisdom. Obviously, she is a literary icon as well, which is another reason why I love her. 
It's the defiance in her writing that I love the most. She used her voice to speak up for others and to show those who oppressed them that you cannot destroy the human spirit. Her work can still teach new audiences a great deal about resilience, humility and the power of the written word in the fight for justice. We have another sporting hero here from Mr Ward. What he said about Norman Whiteside was, he was living out my dream, a boy from Northern Ireland playing for Manchester United at 17. The youngest player to play in the World Cup, which was in 1982, and the scorer of great goals such as in the FA Cup semi-final in 1983 against Arsenal or the FA Cup winner against Everton in 1985. And he's asked you to look them up on YouTube. All heroes have flaws and Whiteside struggled to maintain his incredible career due to injury and alcohol. But heroes should inspire the potential in youth and he did this for me. So excellent choice there from Mr Ward. Mrs Machen struggled to choose just one personal hero, so she chose three. And she chose Mike Cawthorn, Brian Burney and her mum. So what she said was, Mike Cawthorn is a former teacher who decided to set himself the challenge of walking all of the Scottish Munros, which are over 1,000 metres, so it's a long way, over winter in one journey. His book, Hell of a Journey, was inspirational and made him a hero to me. Brian Burney is a local hero because he founded the Daft as a Brush charity following his own personal battle with cancer to help support other families. Um, and what Daft as a Brush do is they offer um, cancer patient transportation to and from hospital. And what she said about her mum was that she is such a strong woman and showing me you can have a challenging career and be a great compassionate mum at the same time. So excellent choices there from Mrs Machen. So Mrs Sexton chose her dad as her personal hero. Now, I don't have a photo of Mrs Sexton's dad, so I used my imagination, and in my imagination, this is what he looks like. So what she said was, my dad is my hero and has been all my life. I firmly believe that there is no man that has ever worked harder, no man that has ever had more patience, and no man that can ever live up to him in my eyes. He raised three girls along with my mum, which was no mean feat given the fact that we are all only a year apart in age. But he had the patience of a saint for the sharing the bathroom years, the teenage hormones and the Primark shopping trips. And he still helps out with those to this day, pre-Covid, of course. So that's a very personal choice for Mrs Sexton there with her dad. So after I spoke to those members of staff, it started me thinking on who I would choose as my personal hero. And it was something that I really struggled with because... It could be literally anybody. It doesn't even have to be a real person. It can be a fictitious character from a book that you love or a movie that you enjoy. Um, it can be somebody that you've read about on, on the news or on social media or a sporting hero. And it, I genuinely struggled with the decision. So I, I came up with a little bit of a list. Um, and one of the people on my list absolutely has to be Hermione Granger from the Harry Potter series. Now, let's face it, without Hermione, Harry would have probably died in book one and there wouldn't have been a series to read because... The work she did and, you know, the heroism that she showed was just incredible from start to finish. Another mention towards the, the Harry Potter franchise is Professor Snape. Now, I don't want to give too much away because I'm sure some of you haven't seen it or haven't read the books in, in one, two. So let's just say he bravely walked a dangerous path from start to finish. Very, very good character. Um, if we cast our minds back to the beginning of 2020... Australia um, suffered the, the worst bushfires on record. It was absolutely horrific. It went on for a really long time. So I want to think about the, the firefighters who helped to combat those. And 90% of the firefighters in Australia don't actually get paid. They're volunteers. So for them to spend the amount of time and effort tackling those, those fires and saving those animals was just incredible. Um, this man here is Uga Shaheen. Now, his company are responsible for the Pfizer vaccine. So that's one of the vaccines that are being used to treat COVID-19. So I imagine there's a, a Nobel Prize probably headed his way in the very near future. And that's incredibly inspirational work that him and his company have done. Um, we've also got Marcus Rashford, who has just done a phenomenal amount of work in campaigning to end food poverty and to provide meals for, for children and families who need it. And because of him, People in the local communities have started to change the way they work. So um, there have been absolutely loads of takeaways, cafes, things like that, giving away free meals. And this is all because of the work that Marcus has, has done over the past year. 
Uh, this lady here is Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Now, sadly, she passed away not so long ago, but she was an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court in America, and she spent a lifetime fighting adversity, fighting for equality, and she did absolutely loads for um, women's rights in, in her country. Next up, I'm sure you'll all know, is Captain Sir Tom Moore. And what he did, I'm sure you're all aware of this, is he aimed to walk 100 laps of his garden um, in the run-up to his 100th birthday. And he wanted to raise a £1,000 for charity. And what he ended up doing was inspiring the nation and raising over £33 million. Um, Sadly, he passed away earlier this month, but the legacy he left behind will just go on and on because it was just incredible what he did and the hope that he gave people in a very difficult time. I also want to mention your parents, carers, families, because the, the past year will have been incredibly difficult for them. And it's nothing that any of us could have ever expected to come in our lifetime. And the way people have risen to the challenge and gone to work, homeschooled, looked after younger children, looked after, you know, family, friends, things like that. It's just been amazing. So I do want to give a shout out to your parents as being true heroes, too. And last, but by all means not least, is you guys. And that is because, again, the resilience you have shown in such a difficult time is just awesome. I mean, this has been going on for a year. That's terrifying. <laughs> a year now um, in lockdown, out of lockdown, not seeing your friends, having to work online. Um, some of you having to come in for exams and, and things like that. It's just been really hard. So it's incredible. Well done, you guys. You are all heroes to me. Okay, so now I want to move on to our special mentions. So in year seven, we have Darren Jane, who walked 100 laps of his garden for his PE lesson in honour of Captain Tom, who we've just been talking about. So that's amazing. Well done, Darren. And Patrick H, he took on Mrs Langford's crepe challenge and designed a crepe to recognise Captain Tom and his efforts. So well done to Patrick as well. Special mentions for year eight, we have Fergus H, so that's Patrick's brother, and Mrs Langford said that Fergus is one of the most committed and talented year eight students she has ever taught. And we have another picture of the crepe here, now I'm not sure if this one is Fergus's or Patrick's or if we did it together, but it really is incredible, so well done boys. Um, also we have Katrina S, and she is being mentioned for showing an exemplary attitude since starting from in year seven and has continually produced work to the highest standard in all of her subjects. So well done, you. Three students mentioned by Dr. Smith in year nine. So we've got Jason D for completing excellent work. We've got Owen W for excellent communication with his teachers. And Josh W for best choice of motivational music. So well done, you three. So for year 11, we've got Callum H for good work and communication. Alex C for excellent manners on Microsoft Teams. And Mrs. King also wants to say well done to everyone on the completion of your sixth form interviews because the staff who were carrying out the interviews were very impressed with how you all conducted yourselves. So well done year 11 for that. So Mrs. Mersh Roberts would like to mention Susie K and Alex S in year 12 for their enthusiasm and commitment to online learning. So well done guys, that's really good news. In year 13, all of you for continuing to work hard on revision for upcoming mock exams and course deadlines. So well done, everybody. That is absolutely brilliant all across the board. Okay, so now it's time for this week's challenge and we want to hear from you about a time when you have been a local hero. So let us know about a time when you have gone above and beyond to help others, someone else that you know or someone you don't know in your life. So have you walked a neighbour's dog? Have you gone to the shops for somebody who's been self-isolating? Have you offered to look after a younger child for somebody? Have you rescued an animal? Anything that you think is above and beyond, we want to know about. And you can tell us in the most creative way imaginable. You can email your year team, you can draw it as a picture, you can write it as a poem, you can write it as a letter, you can write it as a newspaper article. Be as creative as you can um, and send the entries to your heads of year by Friday this week. Thank you all for listening. I hope you all have a great week back um, and see you soon, hopefully.